Hello and welcome to this week's show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are Green Wisdom Health, home of your low-cost lab work and very informative information. Speaking of which, we are here to bring you another episode of our ever-fantastic nutritional information, supplements, and ideas. Rabbit holes. Yes, those two. And today we are going to educate you about probiotics. Are they the next big thing or they are the next big thing? Yep. Okay. So Dr. Lewis is going to tell us why they are so important and why he's calling them the next big thing before anybody else talks about them that much. So please inform us why is it so important? You know, we know to take our Activia for our probiotic supplement. Isn't that good enough? Uh, Bull. Uh, you know, we all have opinions. I don't know how far ahead of the curve I am, or I may be behind the curve. I, you know, I've said for years it's gluten intolerance is real, but it's glyphosate intolerance. Uh, and a lot of you over the weekend, I've you know, I've had conversations with many people through uh, shooting straight with Dr. Lewis and through emails. And uh, I told one lady, I said, eh, I'm afraid that last podcast I was a little bit rude. And she said, well, it's obvious you kind of have a heart for trying to help people to help themselves. And it's like, yeah, you know, probiotics are just really, really incredible, and they can take anxiety away, too. I'll get into that in a little bit. But you've got to watch what you take. Uh, not all supplements are the same, and I know there's a lot of people that have trouble believing me, but that really is, you know, the way it is. I had a pretty... Um, I don't know if I should say rich and successful or just well-known doctor saying he wanted us to uh, put this and this and this and sell his probiotic. And it's like, you only got one strain there. You know, a good strain starts at about 10, and I'll, I'll go into that. And then you've got to worry about, uh, is it going to have good survival? And there's different things, you know, you have to consider. You know, I know we ship most of ours with a ice pack and people say well it's melted by the time you get there yes but they over grow these things so that if it does lose two percent of its of its efficacy that you're still getting more than what your label says and more than what you paid for so there is a stability one lady says what do you think about this particular probiotic of course i looked it up and i said that well they guarantee this amount of cfus that stands for colony forming units So much, and I said mine is 13.3 times stronger, and that's the weakest one I've got, but it's 13.3 times guaranteed stronger and costs less. Why you listen to me and uh, buy some of that junk, I'll never know, that particular person. Um, You know, when I get advice from Janet, I take everything home to Janet, so, (laughs) okay. Jan is shaking her head, so I'll, I'll calm down. Um, I think the thing about it is, on probiotics, you need to let somebody else do the heavy lifting, and that's probiotics, because for years, they said, well, genetics, gen- gen- genetics, genetics. I've heard that this morning. Well, my genetics. Yeah, but you can alter genetic expression 80, 90, 95%, according to massive amount of different research. And so if you can alter that, you've got to realize there's about 10 times more microorganisms in our body than we have cells in our own body. So who do, who's controlling who? We're not who we think we are. We're a big mass of a microbiome, you know, bacteria, yeast, fungus, viruses, you know, all kinds of different little booger bears. They're not bad, or, or they can be more good. And <clears throat> Janet bought me those fermentation things. I've not yet fermented anything, but I've got one guy that's going to bring me what he said, a SCOBY. I thought he meant a joint, but uh, he said he's going to bring me a SCOBY. And yeah, Janet's shaking her head again. Uh, and so I'm I can... sorry, folks. I can't keep him on track. I try. <laughs> <laughs> that's what keeps her smiling. Um and so he's going to teach me how to do uh, whatever that is. Then you got Big John that's going to bring me something uh, and teach me how to do kombucha. His favorite is uh, raspberry and ginger. Uh, and the other guy, I think it's kefir or something. 
Um, so I'm going to learn to ferment. I asked Big John, I said, is, okay, kombucha is like before or after the bourbon. He never said anything about the bourbon, so I may have to do that by myself. These probiotics are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important, and I'm going to skip a little bit ahead, and, you know, yeah, that's me. What are we skipping ahead to? to? Well, I'm, I'm getting that particular note. The lady that asked about oxalates, that's on the shooting straight. If you're not a member of shooting straight, you really ought to join. It keeps my butt busy so I can't have fun on weekends, but I do have fun doing the shooting straight. <clears throat> and um, she asked me about, uh, was there a couple of questions about oxalates? Right. You're talking about uh, Penny. And and people are, he keeps saying shoot, shooting straight. He's talking about on Facebook, you can actually ask to be a member of his group where people are asking questions. And many of you have this week. So thank you very much for that because um, we're really getting some good feedback here. And it, and it helps us to understand what you want mentioned. But Alice mentioned it as well and Penny and they both a uh, little bit different conversation but they're talking about the dangers of oxalates and would like that discussed on a podcast i think we're actually going to do a podcast about it yeah so but, thank you yes both of you but um but we're I, I guess that's what he's talking about here he wants to briefly mention it i yeah, guess but, any sub suggestions for supplements to help mitigate the effects was from penny yeah and the reason i wanted to jump into that is because i do have this related to uh probiotics but what oxalates are, they're kind of a, a plant metabolite because plants have defensive mechanisms and that kind of discourages predators, which may be just bugs, from eating the leaves. Because if you eat the leaf of, or you know, take the leaf of the plant, you know, it can't feed itself. It can't breathe and can't get the the sunlight which it turns it to energy and in, into their food so they do have um a protective mechanism which i think oxalates are probably just i don't know if they're just as bad maybe worse than gluten but again i gluten's a, a real deal but think glyphosate um the reason i wanted to talk about that just a little bit because there are different types of probiotics that are incredibly important you know the digestive enzymes are good enzymes are basically the key to unlocking something you know a molecular key there's so much different research on probiotics and and it usually uh, focuses on diarrhea prevention and intestinal health and stomach ulcers but it goes further into immunity. Think all you people that have autoimmune diseases. Think probiotics, but it has to be a good one. Um, probiotics also can help decrease cholesterol, although cholesterol is not a big deal. That's been overblown to sell drugs. But and there's uh, excess calcium. I just want to talk about calcium oxalate because we see that in the urine of many, many people. Well, if you have calcium oxalate in your urine, you almost always, or at least have a great propensity toward kidney stones. And there are probiotics that, that deal with that. So it's very, very important to understand that they actually, probiotics can reduce it or help with the antioxidant activity uh, to prevent not just the pathogens, but some of the metabolites like oxalate. I've got a friend that many years ago, he listened to me, he had you know, two two friends that had kidney stones. One of them, I said, well, you need to do this, 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 and this. 30-something years later, he actually 40 years, um, wow, geez, I wasn't even out of chiropractic college. And I told him, I said, do this, 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 and this. He's never had another kidney stone. Now, my best friend, love him dearly, but he's kind of wild. He taught me all the bad things I know that I smile about. Tales I can't tell. But he doesn't listen to me about kidney stones. And about every year and a half, he goes into the hospital, spends about $10,000, pees blood, and uh, takes time off work and has excruciating pain. And he just thinks that's kind of normal. Um, what do you take for kidney stones for prevention? You know, I talked to a lady about that yesterday. And uh, 
a, a lady up in Ohio, Kathy, who has been very quietly doing this since 2015. She's kind of a sleeper. You don't hear much from her. I told her, I said, good Lord, email me or call me once in a while. She's a sweet, sweet lady. She had had them, and I said, well, there's different research on it. What you do, uh, mostly we just give people potassium citrate, but there's other things you can and probably should do. And I said, because your liver enzymes are a little bit low, you probably have low B6, and we like to use the activated form of B6, which is P5P. And I said, if you have low B6, you don't have good uh, detox and excretion through the liver, and then you don't feel real good mentally because you need those B6 to allow the neurotransmitters to cross the blood-brain barrier. And you just don't, I don't like the word depressed, but I said you just don't feel as up and chipper as you used to. And, uh, you know, this is over the phone, but I think she had tears in her eyes. A real sweet lady. And uh, it turned out that seemed to be true. So potassium citrate, B6, the activated form, P5P, and then magnesium. The type of magnesium you should take just depends on your bowel habits. If you have one bowel movement a day or less, you take uh, magnesium citrate. If you have two or three, then you'd take our reacted magnesium. And then we have magnesium glycinate, too, which works real, real well. So all of those have been known to decrease the instance of these calcium oxalates. And there are others. But uh, and, and decrease the tendency toward kidney stones, and and all three of them are cheap. That's awesome. Uh, there's actually some other benefits to probiotics as well as helping with the oxalate issue, like improving mental health. Is that not correct? Or oh, correct. Big time. There is so much research, and you know, y'all know I like to read research, and I have a pretty good memory. Thank goodness. We or, wonder, what does mental health have to do with a probiotic exactly? How, why, well, why, would the, why would the mind be affected by a probiotic? Well, because the neurotransmitters or the happy hormones are, are made in your GI tract. And if you have dysbiosis or, you know, a imbalance of the proper uh, microbiome, so to speak, that will alter it. Most of us have too much yeast. We all, yeah, it's normal to have yeast in our intestines, but most of us have an overgrowth because we eat too much stuff that turns to sugar. There's many, many of them, uh, like the Bifidobacterium infatus, increases the precursor to serotonin, which is tryptophan. That's just one of them. Then there's... Uh, well, actually, back, uh, Bifidobacterium infantis also has uh, a lot to do with the norepinephrine or noradrenaline levels. Uh, Lactobacillus rhamnosus has been known to reduce anxiety. It alters the expression of GABA, which is gamma aminobutyric acid, those receptors. And, uh, in, and these are in a lot of animal models. That's why I think that uh, probiotic use is going to grow more and more and more because some people are getting tired of using their genes as an excuse. Well, it's in my genes. No, it's not. You, you know, God gave you a gift and you can choose to have a better, healthier life. Yeah, we do have some genetic restrictions. I, I do agree. And there's limitations of matter, but we're not living anywhere close to the percentage that God intended for us to live. So, and Joe up in Saline, Michigan, I just love that guy. I know I said that a podcast or two ago, but he said, well, I didn't think this gut healing would take all this, would take so long. It's a constant, constant effort. You cannot completely fix your gut because we eat genetically modified foods We're exposed to at least 84,000 chemicals, and some people say it's a lot more than that. A minimum of 500 chemicals a day that your body is exposed to that's not natural in our environment, so you need to up the uh, nutrient levels so your body can increase these detoxification pathways. And these probiotics 
help tremendously. I let probiotics do the heavy work. If I don't, I don't even know I'm getting sick. Janet knows it about two days before, and she will bring me a packet of what I call the big dog that I don't like to take because I said it's too expensive. What is it you bring me, Janet? I bring him probiotic 225, and that's in a powder form. They're little stick uh, packages that you open up, take the whole package. It's so strong they can't put it in a capsule because there's too much of it. So um, you put a little water in your mouth and dump the packet in your mouth, and it immediately, I mean, just your your mind feels better. If you're if you're coming down with something many times, that goes away. Uh, like Dr. Lewis said, I can tell when he's getting sick, and I'll give him that. And at night, we we do it before we go to bed because that's the best time of night to take your probiotics because they have a better opportunity to stay in your system. Uh, so I give it to him before he gets in bed, and the next morning he's a completely different person again. <laughs> Oh, he's Dr. back Lewis, to this person Jekyll, again. Jekyll Hyde. Yes. I don't know that that's good. Different may not imply good. But. Yeah, but he, uh, you know, we was talking about mental health with it. They're actually doing some research now that shows that um, these probiotics are helping with autism spectrum disorder, and also. Yeah, I'd love to get a lot of autistic kids. Uh, I, I was invited to speak at an autistic group one time, and I said, "Great, I'm going to give you all the research." And they call me and says, you're not invited anymore because you're going to give them hope. Well, well hope, yeah. All you got to do is increase their detoxification pathways, and they get more and more functional and happier. Yeah, it's very strange. Also, they are doing, it's mostly in animal models now, but they are suggesting that certain types of probiotics uh, can improve memory and protect against neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's. Yeah, if you could just get a probiotic that would make a man listen to his wife, you'd be a billionaire overnight if you had developed that strain. And the probiotics support digestion, which is my favorite issue to talk about. Um, and that's why we wanted to talk to you about the different strains, because many people are confused about what probiotic is good. And um, there are different ones that help with digestion, If you have constipation issues, our favorite is a product called N8. It's I-N-N-A-T-E. If they're mild constipation issues, we have a 20,000. 20 billion. I'm sorry, 20 billion. And then we have a 50 billion for people that are very constipated. And sometimes really? she gives me two fifty billion per night. So I, I think she says she's politely saying I'm full of it. I wasn't quite done with it. I was going to say for some people <laughs> they take two of those fifties at a time. I guess some people know who they are. <laughs> uh, if the shoe fits. <laughs> but they by themselves will make a huge difference in in bowel motility so maybe that's why i wake up and i'm a different person she didn't say better she said different that's true <laughs> but if you're having to take things like x lax and things that help keep things just being shoved through you might consider uh, why are they having to be shoved through and do something more natural that helps build the good bacteria in your gut and it also kills yeast and then there's people that don't have a constipation issue. They may It may be the other issue, or they just may want a probiotic. And we recommend orthobiotic to them because it comes in a 20 billion. We also have one that's a 100 billion that we really like. It's probably our favorite of that group uh, that you can take daily because it's a huge dose of good probiotic, and it's shelf-stable, so it does not have to stay cold. Which is which is a big deal to most, and people now getting things shipped to them. But okay. I wanted to mention how uh, probiotics support digestion and inflammatory bowel disorders, like things you have to think like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and it can also help with irritable bowel, ir- irritable bowel. Say that fast three times. Yeah, uh, which is a condition that's characterized by bloating and gas, diarrhea, and constipation. But And and that's why I tell people to take Glutashield a lot, too. It's an incredible product. But uh, and, and there's some people say, well, I take the probiotics and I get bloated and feel bad. Well, you usually, at that time, you have SIBO, which stands, it's S-I-B-O, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. And that's why 
it's good that people can communicate with me. And one species I'd like to talk about, even though we're talking about a lot of different ones, is there's one called Lactobacillus salivarius, and it's been known to inhibit the growth of H. pylori. Everybody knows about H. pylori. And it reduced the inflammatory inflammatory response also it also has known it's known for its ability to inhibit a bacteria called gardnerella vaginalis which is the one that usually causes bacterial vaginosis which is a bacterial in- infection characterized by excessive discharge and usually unpleasant smelling discharge and, uh, you know, I had a lady come in not too long ago, and she says, well, I need some bacteria. And uh, I said, what for? And she turned red. She says, oh, well, you're the one that told me to do it anyway. So she had a, a vaginal issue. So she just would open it up and douche with it. And Janet's found some new stuff that is incredible for uh, Candida. She'd been giving it to me. Uh, anyway, I, I'm sorry. Got down a rabbit trail. Yeah, and I going speaking of rabbit trails, um, we're going to talk more about these probiotics because we have one actually for weight loss that we want to talk about. Yeah, um, we only have skinny girls that say it works. I don't really know, but it people are really excited about it and keep buying it. Yeah, but we want to make sure we get to these questions first, and we've had a bunch. Thank you, guys. This was an exciting week of answering things, and I think I'm throwing a few of these. Yeah, these keep, that Dr. Lewis that he's not aware of, so yeah, we'll see what it, he comes up with. Keep them coming just because, hey, we'll just do questions and call it rumor has it. Yeah. Uh, this is from Richard, and he's wondering on a family history of high blood pressure, what levels are really high and what supplements help and what major changes in a diet affect that? So, um, Geez, you're going to have to repeat that after yeah. a while. Well, so let me start with it. There's um, several phases to this. What what constitutes high blood pressure? What well, levels? the medical profession kind of changes its idea. You know, I'm hearing now 140 over 90 and below that. Uh, let me caution you. I, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a chiropractor. I'm proud of it, too. Uh, more into natural healing. But I have seen, and this includes Janet's daddy. I just adore that man. I've seen people take blood pressure medicine, get their blood pressure down so much it doesn't go where it's supposed to go janet's daddy has trouble standing up and it's like oh good god you know you're you're almost dead they got him medicated down to 105 over something yeah down in the 60s yeah. anyway have you ever thought for a minute that maybe god or your body and in its infinite wisdom is raising the blood pressure to force more blood into the capillaries, into your brain, et cetera, et cetera. Not that high blood pressure is a good thing. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is you can and should look at the underlying cause. So, you know, my, I have to take stuff because, I, and again, it may be genetic and part of it definitely is gut related. Um, I have to take stuff. I take, usually high blood pressure is not usually this simple, but it's a gut problem, poor digestion. It's lack of magnesium and low vitamin D. Very good. So, um, so those are the things to take for it, I guess. And then, yeah, well, Citronox. Okay. Yes, we have a product called Citronox that does help lower the blood pressure naturally. Yeah, it's kind of sort of awesome. And then uh, he's also asking what major changes in diet affect that. Well, if you get off the uh, grains and sugars and things that turn to sugars uh, too much, get off all the artificial things uh dyes and uh colorings and uh msg things like that if you'll go back if we actually ate a real diet and our food is horribly deficient in nutrients but if we just ate real food you know half the things in the world you know half the problems would go away so thank you richard for that question and if i was out with you and rebecca where y'all are touring the country I wouldn't have high blood pressure. You know, here's the thing about it. Oh, he might, because I'd have him driving a longer one. Yeah, no, she's got me puckered up driving what we're driving. Now she wants a long one. But you got to realize that most of the problems in life are really because of two reasons. We act without thinking, or we think without acting. So, you know, figure out which one your issue may be and go from there. But probiotics help you think more clearly. Okay, and Brian is asking about canola oil. Is it harmful to the body? And if so, 
What is a good oil to replace it with? Well, you, you, yeah, it's horrible. Stay away from it. When I bought a bunch of bees that came out of uh, North Dakota, they'd been on the canola fields. I thought, holy cow, no wonder we're poisoning our bees. Um, I like butter, ghee, avocado oil, walnut oil, grapeseed oil. We use pecan and walnut quite a bit. And you can cook with those. Yeah, he was talking about smoke point. I think olive oil has the lowest smoke point. And then Tara sent a little um, chart on that. that, And uh, that's why I like shooting straight with Dr. Lewis, because you got people like Tara that, you know, puts the charts in or she puts the the time and the effort in and puts the charts in and saves me. So it's everybody helping everybody on there. Yeah, it really helps a lot of people. And then we had a new member named Benny that asked about bottled purified water. Is it better for you than bottled spring water? Oh, we've got a mm. great spring here, they call. Yeah. Ozarka calls it great spring water here coming well, right out of Comes out of Wood East County. It, Wood County. If you knew what I did in Wood County back a few years ago on the deer leash, you wouldn't drink that crap. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It depends on the spring it comes from. And, and it can pick up a few good minerals, although they're usually uh, n- not the type that your body can uh, convert. We, we use plants to convert inorganic to organic. But uh, I think reverse osmosis is the best. And people say, no, they filter out the good minerals. There's so little minerals in it. And Janet and I just take the reacted multi men, or you can sprinkle in a little electrolyte energy or trialkali and totally alkalize that water. So you don't have to pay several thousand dollars to get alkaline water. You just sprinkle in a half a cent worth of minerals, and boom, you're there. Okay, and we do want to make sure that we answer the weight loss portion of our probiotic because we know we have y'all excited now, and you're wondering, hey, I wonder what they're talking about. Um, There is, you know, probiotics are now known to help with weight loss where you have not heard that mentioned before. Um, We have one, it's a Zymogen product, which you won't see Zymogen on our website because they want to make sure that... uh, Unless you're a real patient. Yeah, unless you're a real patient and you have an account where we've upgraded your account. So if you're trying to see this product... So if you're unreal... (laughs) <laughs> if you're unreal, make a real account and then uh, email me or call me so I can upgrade the account so that you can see it. But it's called Pro Biomax Lean. And um, we have had several people that's come in here that's been taking that and have been trying to lose weight for a long time. We have one that's a full-blown diabetic and she's dropping weight like crazy. Yeah, that's uh, true. We've seen her a couple of times now since she's been on it. And it's like, oh, my word, it's it's coming off of her. So do pro, probiotics promote weight loss? Most definitely. But you've got to have the right... Um, yeah, that, the yeah, right can, microorganisms and the strains and, of it, and the right ratios. That's in my notes somewhere. Bacteriocytes versus vermicutes, and you something like that. You've got to you've got to have the right ratios, and yeah. so you got to work on that because they will alter levels of specific hormones in the body that regulate your appetite and hunger, and help with cortisol, and it helps you feel fuller between meals to kickstart your weight loss. So yes, we have that. So. Back to our questions, and I, and we may have to do some of these next week because, like I said, we had a whole bunch of them. Um, but we're going to answer Jason here, who said it's a whopper of a mosquito and tick season here in the Ozarks due to all the rain. Any suggestions for repellent alternatives to DEET? Well, and, I had one on my four wheeler called Go Away. It's a natural insect repellent. It's you know I think the basic of it was cedar oil or something like that. I think that works real well, but there's some people that confiscated it off my four-wheeler, and so I don't know if it works. I guess it does because it got used up by other people, and they liked it. So, uh, And we've got some things hanging in our yard that are working pretty well also. That yeah. um, They're a natural deal that you just fill with water, and they, they're doing pretty mosquito good. Mosquito exterminator? Yeah, mosquito uh, exterminator. Some, something, I don't know. It, it's cheap and natural. It's done better than anything we've had, so... Yeah. Thank you, Jason, for that question. And then uh, let's see if we've got any more here that we can uh, address really quick. Julie 
ask about Hashimoto's and low ferritin. They're common. What do you have to say about Hashimoto's and high ferritin? Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. It's getting more and more common. Most of the experts uh, think it's a gluten thing, uh, you know, creating the leaky gut gaps. And, you know, we have had incredible, holy geez, incredible results. If you can get them on Glutashield, uh, SBI Protect, and heal the gut, you may always have Hashimoto's, uh, but uh, some experts say never, never give them iodine. It's like throwing gasoline on the fire. Then the other experts say you can give them 50 or 75 milligrams, which is overdose, in my opinion. Uh, so you need to have somebody that can check you, whether it's a, a Western medicine or, or natural, like what I do. You need to have somebody that can monitor you as an individual. But, yeah, we... we get Hashimoto's under control all the time because we stabilize the immune system by helping the GI tract, and probiotics is a big part of that. And we also can do it through low-cost lab work, which is what we do. It's what we're famous for. So if you've got Hashimoto's or thyroid disorders or trying to lose weight or anything we talked about, go to our website, greenwisdomhealth.com, fill out the health survey, it will uh, suggest a lab panel to you, which you are welcome to purchase there if you would prefer Dr. Lewis to contact you. Uh, don't purchase the lab panel when it's suggested, and he will give you a call and, and discuss with you what's going on so that we can get what's best for you. And be careful with the low ferritin. That can be a lot of different things. You may be bleeding internally. You might have to see a GI doctor uh, or go to the hospital if it's really low. But that's something that's a consideration that you know, you're know you never going to feel good with low ferritin. And there you have it. We hope you've enjoyed this week's show and keep the questions coming. We love it. It uh, really makes our day and our week and it makes our show enjoyable. So um, we'll be here next time and you guys have a blessed week. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope and your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.